Hello everybody, it's Jeff Rob. How are you out there? Uh, thank you for spending your Saturday night with me. Uh, what a beautiful day it was, right? I hope everybody was out there. Uh, I'm going to be making a Mexican lasagna and a tortilla soup today. Uh, your recipe will, your recipes will be, uh, the library will have them for you. Okay. And uh, let me start with getting the Mexican lasagna, then I'll start talking about different things. Okay, let me just get this pot on here. I'm just going to add just a little bit of olive oil. Just want to get that a little hot. And then I'm just going to put in some ground round. I'm putting in about two pounds of it. Two pounds. It's pretty lean. It's the 88%. Okay, so let's just kind of crumble that up and we'll put little bits in here okay when you're cooking the ground beef make sure before you put it into the lasagna that you cook it uh, all the way because when it goes in the lasagna you may not get it to cook all the way through okay so. right there oh then in there get rid of these gloves here while that's cooking a second I've been doing a lot of these classes for all the different libraries all over Long Island, and I always have something about every library to say, okay? And the one, Mastic Shirley, it was one of my earlier ones. I, I started about eight years ago, and from the minute I walk in the door, from the security guards to the custodians uh, to the uh, people that hire me, the desk, they're always so, so nice to me and treat me like unbelievable. And that's why we have such a nice loyal to, loyalty to one another. So thank you, Alton Mastic Charlie. I appreciate it. Uh, anybody, if at any time you have any questions or comments, please feel free, okay? I'm, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere, okay? Just like you, you're not going anywhere either, right? So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of seasoning to this. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of chili powder. And this will give it a nice smoky flavor. If you like a little more smoky flavor, of course, hit it a little more. And I'm going to add cumin. Cumin also will give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. This is two teaspoons worth. I want to put in a little bit of kosher salt and get that meat cooking. Okay. So I'm just going to stay with this meat for a minute here. I want to go over a few different options. Some of the options are if you're vegetarian, make this all different type vegetables, peppers, onions, you can roast carrots, roast uh, zucchini, and it will come out really, really good. Okay, um, you can use chick, ground chicken meat, ground turkey, comes out really good. What I want to do is I want to add a little bit of red onion. I let it cook just a little bit and then I add the red onion. I don't want to put the red onion in right away because I want a little bit of a crunch to it. Okay, so let me just cut these ends off. When you're buying the red onions, make sure they're nice and firm around the whole outside of it means it's nice and fresh. For any, anybody out there that has children, I'm going to be doing a Mother's Day tea for your library, and it's on Mother's Day. Okay, it's pre-recorded. They already have it, but it'll be on Mother's Day. So even if you're not a kid and you want to watch four different type tea sandwiches. So I'm putting about half of a red onion. Just chopping it small. You can leave it on the larger side or the smaller, depends how you do like it. I like chunks in my vegetables and my sauce. Let me add this red onion in here. I'm just going to let that cook for a little bit. So, let that cook, let that ground beef cook all the way through. I want to throw my soup on right now. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh tomato and some whole tomatoes. The whole tomatoes, I'm using these. They're called Muir Glen. 
They're organic and they have so much flavor in there. If you've never tried them, I know Stop and Shop does carry them. I was introduced uh, to them years ago in Publix down in Florida. I did a cooking class down there. I went to it. You know, I needed to learn a little more. You know, so uh, I bought these there and they were fantastic. So let me put these in here, in this pot. You can actually, let me just hold one up. You can see that they are fire roasted with all that black still on there. Okay. Now, you could blend these ahead of time, or you can wait till the end and use an immersion blender. If you're doing it ahead of time, what you want to do is put it in uh, a regular blender and the coolness from it that, that will uh, be okay in the blender. When you put in the immersion blender, that's when it's hot. Put it all the way to the bottom and the tomatoes will just come right to it. Never leave it at the top. Because if you leave it at the top, what will happen is you'll get a bath and so will anybody else around you. Okay. Okay. So, besides this, these tomatoes here, I'm going to be adding everything in here. This is a very quick soup, but it has a lot of flavor to it. I'm putting in a, a whole tomato, okay? The whole tomatoes, what you want to do, store them face down. That way no moisture gets in by the stem there. You want them to be nice and firm all the way around. You don't want to refrigerate tomatoes, okay? So let me just cut this off. You can use one or two. This one here is a plum tomato. I've been using the plum or the beef steaks. I'm just going to give it a rough chop and put it right into the soup. Okay. Everything gets blended up. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh garlic now. Two small cloves. Just going to chop that up really small. Oh. We have any questions out there? Nope, not yet. Nobody, come on. Well, I need some questions. I'm going to add some fresh cilantro. Fresh cilantro, make sure. I'm just going to stir this Mexican lasagna up. Make sure that you really wash it really well because cilantro really holds the bacteria, the uh, dirt. Okay, we'll be getting our local cilantro really soon. Okay, this is looking good, looking tasty. I'm putting in the fresh cilantro. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt to this as well. I'm putting about a half a teaspoon of chili powder. And you can, of course, season it the way you like it. A quarter teaspoon of the ground cumin. And then a half teaspoon of coriander. Coriander is dried cilantro, sorry. Uh, I'm going to add some chicken bouillon to this. It'll say chicken broth on your recipe. Okay, you can use vegetable broth in it as well. I'm putting in about one tablespoon worth of it. It's almost like a paste. And so if you're making it yourself, what's really good about using the bouillon is you can make it as salty, or if you're on a low salt diet, you can reduce it greatly, okay? And about two cups of water, and that will make the chicken broth. So what I want to do with this, I want to bring this to a nice boil, okay? Get these vegetables nice and tender. I have to add in a little bit of the onion as well. When it boils, it'll kind of soften it up nicely. I have been doing classes almost every day, whether it's um, YouTube or it, it is um, Facebook or Zoom. So you can always check all the different libraries out on Long Island. Okay. I need about a half of a medium size onion, which that is just perfect here. So if you could take a look in the pot here. Like I said, I'm going to bring that to a boil and then I'm going to puree it at the end. What I'm going to do at the very end, I'm going to put it into a soup bowl 
And then I'm going to put some toppings on it. I'm going to put some sour cream, a little shredded Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese, and then also some of these tortilla strips. These tortilla strips, the brand is Fresh Gourmet. You can get them usually down the salad aisle or by the dressings. Okay. Just gonna hit this with just a little black pepper. Okay. We'll let that come to a boil. Then we'll go back to our Mexican lasagna. Okay, so it's cooking nicely. I can see that it really is cooked all the way through. You can always take those big chunks of beef and just kind of take your spoon and break it up just a little bit. That way you're sure it's cooked all the way through. And always bring it towards the center because that's your direct heat. Okay, so different ways that you could change this recipe up, okay? Corn. In the summertime, we get our fresh corn. If you have it left over from a barbecue, just shave it off the cob and just throw it right in this mixture. If you have frozen, just make sure you get all the water out. And if you have canned, same thing, just get the water out. Just want to squeeze any excess water because I don't want my flavors to be watered down. Okay, this, what's really good about this Mexican lasagna is you can Add as much or as little vegetables that you really like. Okay. Okay. Mix this up really good. Now, if I wanted beans in there, which I do, but my family doesn't, I would put in either black beans, the red kidney beans, or the pinto beans. Okay. My favorite is the black beans, but they're out rolling me tonight, so I can't, I can't have it, okay? I'm gonna have this for dinner. Okay, late dinner tonight. Well, it's Saturday night, right? How about anybody out there, Chris? We got anything? Nope, not yet. All right, come on, I need somebody out there, some questions or some comments. Any comments there? Nope. Wow, you guys are quiet for Saturday night. I know, in the library, you guys are all talking, though. So to my patrons that are out there that always come to my class, I hope you are all doing really well out there. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start piecing together the lasagna. I'm going to show you some different ways you can put it together. Now, if you're one person, two persons, Okay, something like this would be perfect, a size like this one. Just give it a quick spray. And then you're going to take your flour tortillas. I'm just going to put one in here just like this. And then, since this is all the way cooked through, I want to add my sauce to it. So if you're making a traditional lasagna, you would be adding marinara, a tomato sauce that's not chunky or chunky, whatever you like. I am adding a salsa. This is a medium salsa, so it has a little kick to it. If you don't like it too spicy, mild. That's all you need. If you don't like the chunks in it, you can use this instead, the mild taco sauce. It's really just, it's pure, okay? So let me just get this all mixed up, and then I'm going to start building my lasagna. Okay. Now, if I was using like a 75-80% ground beef, it would lay, uh, leave a lot of grease. I would want to drain a lot of that, okay? So at this point, I am just going to take some of this meat here. Kind of spread that around. Okay, now with the cheese, I'm just going to go back to my Mexican tortilla soup. Just want to make sure that's all nice. It's cooking, and I just want it to come to a nice boil, and then I'll simmer it. Okay. Right now, I'm going to put on some cheese. Always try to grate your own cheese. It will taste the best. 
the extra sharp cheddar cheese. It's aged for about three years. If you use just sharp cheddar cheese, it's aged for about a year and a half. If you're using the bag cheese, it's aged for about a day and a half. That's why it doesn't have any flavor. It just has a cheese texture to it. So if you ever buy the bag, just try a little by itself and you'll say, I'm never buying that again. Okay. So I have my tortilla, I have my ground beef, and I have my cheese here. I'm going to take the other tortilla here, and you can build these as high as you want. Okay, just like that. Now, I like peppers and onions, so I have these caramelized onions that I am going to put in here, and I'm going to put some of these fresh roasted peppers in here. Okay, put that on top. Now I am going to put some more Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese here. Okay, what you would do at this point, you'd put this in the oven 425 for 30 minutes. Wait till it's nice and bubbly on top. If you want the tortilla to get a little crisp, uh, put the broiler on at the very end, but just stay with it because you don't want to burn it. Okay, so this is one that would be perfect for one person or even two, okay? If you have a big family, just want to show you the other one, you would spray a big pan like this because you can get several lasagnas out of this right here. I'm going to put that right here. I'm going to take some more flour tortillas. It doesn't really matter flour tortillas or corn tortillas. They're going to come out soft anyway. Okay. So if you like a little crunch to it, you're really not going to get it. Only if at the very end with a broiler. So I'm going to put these two in here. And then I'm just going to rip this. I kind of want to just piece this together and have the pan just like this. Okay. Okay, my vegetables from my tortilla soup are boiling nicely. So I'm just going to simmer just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to start building this lasagna. I'm going to add this, about half of the ground beef. Take your spoon, just mix it around really well. That. Okay. I'm going to put some Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese on here. Okay. And now I am just going to put on another layer of the tortillas. Again, if you like the beans to that, you can add the beans to it. I said it before, my family's not a big bean person, so I'm um, overruled tonight. So, we're just going to go like that. We're going to put the remainder of this meat mixture on here. Spread this out generously. Now, if you start running a little low on the meat mixture, you can always go back to your sauce and put a little salsa in there. Just kind of drop some around. That way it's nice and moist all the way through. If you even wanted to add some taco sauce right now to loosen it up, you could do that. That would be fine. If you're not going to use the lasagna after you make it, and you're going to put it in the refrigerator for some hours and then have it later, you will need to cook it longer. Okay, you probably need to do 425 towards the bottom rack of the oven for maybe about 45, 50 minutes. Okay. So Chris, how's the questions going out there? Nope, no questions. Boy, everybody's shy and mastic Shirley, I guess, huh? Wow. Come on, any comments? Anybody got some comments? Someone said, very well explained when you were Good, talking about this. thank you. Sometimes I find the way I explain the things, that takes away from some of the questions because I really do want everybody to know about all the different ways how to do it. Okay, so 
if I explain too much, then uh, sorry about that. This one here would be the same time, 425, about 30 minutes. So I'm just going to leave these on the side. Does anybody want me to deliver these? I bet you we'll get some comments now. I, I've done this before, and I had somebody say, would you deliver it to Florida? Somebody from Florida was watching this, and uh, I, he asked me if I'd meet him in North Carolina. He'll bring something from Florida, and I'll bring this. Uh, well, I hope I'm back into your library soon. If anybody here, that, that if you're obviously on Facebook, the next one that I'm doing is this Wednesday, and it's at 6.30. It's through Half Hollow Library, and I'm doing two different type tacos, a shrimp taco and a Hawaiian chicken taco. Okay, so if you want to watch that. And then on Friday, at 3.30 in Riverhead, or 6.30 Islip, I am doing a stuffed chicken marsala with fontina cheese and prosciutto. Someone has a question. They said, is the separate tin vegetarian? Uh, the separate tin? Yeah. No. Uh, it all has the ground beef in it, but where you could do it at home, what I would do is I would cut some onion up, I'd cut some peppers up, maybe some carrots on the smaller side, um, some zucchini, and I'd toss it with a little olive oil, kosher salt, and black pepper, and I would roast them for about 25, 30 minutes on about a 375 oven, okay? And that will make them nice and tender, still have a little crunch to them, but you would use that instead of the ground beef. And you could still season it with the cumin and the chili powder, okay? So it would come out really good like that. And someone else said they got hungry, so they want one. They got hungry, okay. If I could feed this through uh, Facebook here. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna finish this soup in a minute. What I wanna show you, I wanna show you the plate. This is one that I made already, okay? Uh, this is a two layer one. Now, what I could do is I could take a little bit of sour cream, just put it on the side. I could put a little bit of my salsa over here. and then some homemade guacamole right here. I will send the recipe to be put up on the website so you can get this recipe. This guacamole is very, very tasty. It has onions, it has uh, tomatoes, it has cumin, some chili powder, so, and uh, a little diced jalapeno, so it's up to you whether you want it spicy or not. And it has a little lime juice, kosher salt, and you take a potato masher and just mash it up. Okay, so that's what the plate would kind of look like. Okay? Yes, anybody else? Someone said, I use tofu as a meat substitute. Absolutely, it would work great in this. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna come over to my soup now. I have to switch cords. I'm gonna use my immersion blender now. But Mastic Shirley, every month, we, I'm there every single month, You always a Monday, and we always have at least 40 people, and then there's always a waiting line. And you guys that always come out at month after month for all these years, thank you so much. I, I love coming there. It's so great. When I see Mastic Shirley's on my calendar, it's like, it's nice. Okay, I'm going to take this immersion blender, put it down. Now, if you're not using that grade of tomatoes, you know, like almost like a store brand one, what's going to happen is you're going to need to kind of go right on top of each tomato, okay? They can be a little tough then, okay? These are fire roasted ones, so I just, I'm just going a little bit on top. Sam Marzano are your best tomatoes, okay? Just gonna blend this. You can leave it just a little bit chunky if you like it chunky. Okay. It will have a little consistency of a gazpacho or a salsa at the end, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I just wanna take this off.
I'm just going to ladle some of this into this bowl right here. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to put some sour cream. That will almost make it come out like a, a cream of tomato soup because it's going to give it that little cream texture to it. So you just kind of blend it in there. Then I'm putting on this Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese. And then only when you're about to serve it do you want to put these on because you want that nice crunch, okay? And you want it to look pretty when it goes on the plate. So this is exactly what it would look like, okay? Mix it up, get that creamy texture to it. It tastes delicious. Just be careful because it's piping hot. You wouldn't want to burn your mouth. The one thing I wanted to go over with the Mexican lasagna, you can put scallions on at the end or you can actually add them into the mixture. I have some scallions right here. Now what I like to do, see these little roots right here? I'm going to take, take these gloves off. These little roots right here, you can take these little ones here, go plant them outside in some really nice good soil and put them in a nice sunny spot and you will have scallions the rest of your life. Unless you have deer that live across the street like I do, okay? So this part here is very strong in onion flavor and it gets sweeter as you go up, okay? This part here, it's a little tough, okay? Almost like hard to kind of chew, almost like a little eggplant texture. So I am just going to cut that off, okay, and then I would just use this right here, okay? So what questions do we have out there, Chris? Nope, nothing else. No? Okay. So everybody, Mother's Day, if you want to look at the Mastic Shirley Library, um, I think it's 1 o'clock, but check the website, okay? And I'm doing four different type tea sandwiches. I know one is a roast beef and horseradish sour cream. One is a cucumber and dill with a, a lemon cream cheese. I know I have a curry chicken apple salad. And I have a turkey with gouda cheese and honey crisp apples and like a cranberry mayo. So am I getting you hungry out there? Okay. You probably all ate dinner already, didn't you? So before I say goodnight to everybody, let, let me see if there's any questions out there. One more question. Someone said, where can I find your restaurant? When, where can you find my restaurant? When the libraries open up again, I'm at each library. I go to over 90 different libraries all over Long Island. That is my restaurant. Uh, so unfortunately closed right now. This is my restaurant. Uh, I'm doing it from home right now to give you all different ideas. Um, like I said, you can go to all the different libraries. The next one is the um, Half Hollow one on Wednesday at 6.30, two different tacos, okay? And then on Friday, uh, Riverhead at 3.30, and then Islip at 6.30. Um, I used to work in a restaurant. I used to be a head chef at uh, some restaurants out in Southampton, and then I was a personal chef. I did that for about 14 years. And then uh, I got a call from one of the libraries. Hampton Bays was the first one, and then I had Mastic, uh, and then I had uh, Bayport Blue Point and Sayville. And then all of a sudden, Mastic Shirley was one of the next ones that called me, and we've been going strong ever since. And I, I hope to be back in your building soon because I, I love going to see you guys at Mastic Shirley. Uh, any final questions before we say goodnight? Nope, but someone said thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for, for watching tonight. And it's still light outside, so go, go for a nice walk before it gets dark out. Okay, have a good night, everybody. Thank you.